Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my new race helmet that I purchased for this year's racing events. First off, I want to say that safety is number one, so make sure you buy the correct racing helmet for the events that you'll be attending. Second, the helmet that I use is perfectly fine. The only reason why I'm buying a new helmet this year is because my Snell certification expired. So it's forcing me to buy a new helmet. Let me show you guys the helmet that I've been using. It is the HJC AR10 and I purchased it in 2010, but not knowing any better, it had a 2005 Snell certification. At the time, this was the budget performance helmet and I really enjoyed it. It fit my head really snug and secure and I felt safe wearing this. Being that the certification is now expired, I'm unable to use this helmet. So here it is. I even put a GoPro mount right here and it's really pretty much in great condition. Some of the features that I love about this thing was that it had these two neat little vents right here where you can open and close and there were also two vents in the back so that heat can dissipate. Uh, what I did not like was that it did not have vents in the front and also the head strap right here or chin strap I mean was a little too long for me so I would have to tuck it beneath my chin so that it didn't stick out. Now let's take a look at the new helmet. I just got the box today and you can see it's still strapped and everything so let's do the unboxing. So it looks like I'm going to have to keep this box to store the helmet when I'm not using it because there's nothing else inside. Let's see what this thing looks like. So I have some instructions right here. Wow. Looks very similar to my AR-10. One of the reasons why I purchased this helmet was that it was cheaper than most of the other helmets. I was surprised. This is the new budget performance helmet. I purchased it for $170 and this one was the budget performance in 2010 which I purchased for about $253. So there's a significant savings there by just purchasing this helmet. I just had to put them side by side for you guys so you guys can see what the differences are. Now. I'm going to put another GoPro mount in the front on this one and if you notice, I love these vents right here. I mean, this one didn't have it which I didn't like but this one does right now so I'm looking forward to seeing if this feature really helps me out with uh, breathing and stuff. Uh, there's two vents in the front which match up with this one and you can see the two vents on the new one are right on top of the head while the two vents on my old one was in the back of my head. I'm going to open up the helmets, but take note that there is a lip on the lens of the AR-10 so that you can grip it to open the helmet up. Uh, on the Conker, there is no lip. You have to dig your finger in and then pull up. Preferably without any experience, I like this helmet because it opens up wider so that heat can dissipate when I open the cover. Whereas this one may trap heat trying to escape the helmet. Looking at the helmets from the side, they both have a quick release mechanism, but the Conker is threaded for a Hans device right here, which is pretty cool. There's something else to think about when purchasing a helmet, and that's weight. You don't want to buy a heavy helmet because if you're going to be wearing it all day, it's going to exhaust you. If you've seen my other videos, you know I get technical here. Let's weigh these helmets and see if there's a difference. I'm going to weigh the AR-10 first. And it weighs 3.52 pounds. Now remember, it does have the GoPro sticky mount on it. So plus or minus a few ounces. And here's the Conquer helmet. And it weighs in at 3.42 pounds. So there is a 0.1 pound difference between these two helmets being the Conker is the lighter of the two. Let's take a look at the interior of the helmets. At first glance, you can see the AR-10 on the left looks to be of more quality than the Conker helmet on the right. 
the AR-10 also has padding throughout the interior of the helmet. And the Conqueror helmet does not have padding throughout the interior. It may dissipate heat much better though because you can see the holes right there. It's time for the fitment test. This is a medium and I also ordered this as a medium too based on the sizing chart. So far without putting the chin strap on, it fits really nice and snug just like the AR-10. I just noticed that the strap has a rubber texture on it so that you can grip it while you pull. One thing that I also don't like that applies to this helmet is the strap hangs loose. One remedy that I found was to tuck it underneath your chin and there you go, it's nice and clean. To sum things up, this could be the ultimate budget performance helmet shootout. Let me know if you guys are aware of any other performance budget helmets. I paid $253 for this helmet in 2010, and in 2018, I paid $170 for this helmet. That's a price difference of $83. It's your preferences on which helmet you like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys out at the races instead of bench racing in the comments section below. I'll see you in the next video.